It's absolutely pouring here today, so this sunny work is really cheering me up. This week, we're looking at one of my favourite artists and one of my favourite artworks. This piece, called La Jeu by Matisse, made in 1953, just a few months before he died. We're going to look at why it's so significant, not only for his life, but also for art history in general. This is significant for Matisse because this was one of Matisse's last works. In 1953, Matisse was wheelchair bound. He'd been diagnosed with cancer, he'd had an operation, and less able to do more physical art methods such as oil painting. He'd turned to these cutouts, or these decoupés as they're called. This artwork was made just under a year before he died but it explodes with life. Just look at the vitality. It says a lot about Matisse's mindset that he remarked upon the sheer joy of the beauty of the universe. It was made in the south of France and it was his only West Coast US commission. It was turned into a ceramic, almost three meters by four meters. It was to hang on the wall of one of the communal rooms in this Los Angeles house. So why is this artwork stylistically important for the canon of art? Well, he took to this method of cutout and it really changed the goalposts as to what was acceptable to produce as finished art. We've seen in the 20th century the goalposts of low art and high art moving towards a unity and this encouraged that train of thought. It was really revolutionary. Even if we think now of cutting out bits of paper and sticking them on a background in coloured design, it's quite freeing. You know, it's still quite inspiring today as a way of making art. So imagine what it felt like back then as an artist to see these works being seen as mainstream. Artists no longer saw the distinction between high art and low art. This is really key for 20th century art development. As Edward Lucy Smith, a prominent art historian said, this is visual art pushed as far as it can be pushed if hedonism is its only aim. For me personally, this also links to one of my favourite art movements, the Fauves. Colour was their main mode of painting, a ridiculously short art movement from 1905 to 1907, which we'll look at again later. Next up, we're going to look at the subject of this piece. Matisse gave a simple title, La Gerbe, or the sheaf in English. And we can see in this picture, it looks like fronds or sheaths of flowers and leaves. We can see the idea of perspective here, hinted by the different colours. The darker colours retreat back and the brighter colours pop out at us as if these particular fronds are closer by to us. It gives that idea of perspective and depth. And the longer and shorter fronds of the flowers and the leaves are indicated here too, giving that sort of organic shape that we would expect from a plant. It gives volume and depth. And the plume or the fanning here of the plant is important too. It's not symmetrical, this piece, but it indicates this idea of a, an organic symmetry that's pleasing to our eye. And the lines are simple, which is also easy for us to read this piece. It exudes and expresses joy, dynamism and energy as it explodes from the two-dimensional surface. Matisse said, although he was bedbound when he was making this work, this new style of work, these paper cutouts, enabled him to create a garden all around him inside his bedroom. He said, I have made a little garden all around me. Throughout his life, he used a variety of subjects. He used figures, still lives, interiors. But in the later years of his life, when he was making these cutouts, we see lots of organic forms. We see birds, snails, flora and fauna. Here, this work is altogether happy. We have the impression that who created this had the joy of life behind them. If we think that this final artwork, the ceramic that was made after this cutout design, was almost three metres by four metres, we can imagine how also this commission would bring a garden inside this private house that it was commissioned for. We can imagine just how impressive and how emotive that would have been in this private space. It would have been overwhelmingly uplifting. Matisse said, what I dream of is an art of balance, an art of purity and serenity, devoid of troubling or depressing subject matter. And he seems to really have grasped that ethos here. Next, we're going to look at the materials that Matisse used to make this. He called it painting with scissors. After illness, he was wheelchair bound and he moved to this easier physical work of cutting out pieces of paper and making a composition. It was fresh and revolutionary. As he was infirm, he spent most of his time in his bedroom. 
Let's imagine his studio for a moment. The way he employed this method of making art, art and life intertwined. His studio and his bedroom became one. The physicality of making oil paintings, etc., was too much for him, so this was easier for him to manage. He mentioned that after he started making these, he felt freer than he'd ever felt before. He said, only what I created after the illness constitutes my real self, free, liberated. We can imagine this if we imagine ourselves today making paper cutouts, they're freeing. What was his method? He essentially cut out shapes and stick onto another piece of paper. Oftentimes he would use gouache to paint these papers. He sometimes commissioned particular tints of paper and he had an assistant to help once he cut out these shapes to organise them on the background piece of paper for him to create the final composition. So he really must have had a vision in his mind as to what he wanted to create. These works were humongous as well, so we can imagine his bedroom, you know, he in his bed cutting out these pieces of paper, his assistant helping him patch this onto a final backdrop piece of paper. The snail, one of his other cutouts at a similar time to this, was nine feet squared. So we can imagine the scale and production line that he had in this essentially personal space that he made into his art life. They were easy to make in bed, but he was able to create a garden all around with these coloured pieces of paper. And we can imagine this, if he was wheelchair bound or bed bound for much of the day, this would enable him to bring the outside, the exterior into his home space. And as an extension of that, he's doing this for his patrons, for this commission. He's bringing the idea of the garden inside, into this interior home in LA. Matisse was not that bothered with perfection. And if we look closely at some of these cutouts, we can see pencil marks, fingerprints, pen marks, and we can see creases where the paper had been folded previously. This work was made in 1953, so just after the Second World War ended, and there was this celebratory mood, we could say. But it really shows just how far art had come in a hundred years. Could we really see court painters or prominent painters in the 1850s making such works, making such subject matters, let alone the way it was made? Next up, we're going to look at the details of this commission. Henri Matisse, in his latter years, was commissioned by Francis and Sidney Brodie, LA-based art collectors who wanted a ceramic for the inside of their A. Quincy Jones home. They were prominent art collectors and their home was designed by A. Quincy Jones, a prominent architect. The artwork created for the interior was to be sympathetic to the style of the house. Colour was the key influence of Matisse's work and we can imagine in LA with the bright sunshine, the colours, the positive atmosphere of this bustling city, that this type of work would really sit well in this atmosphere. This work is decorative but also expressive. It's brimming with life and we can imagine how this would have sat as a ceramic on the wall in this communal room, in this private home. It really would have sort of breathe life into the space. So the Brodies commissioned this piece from Matisse and Matisse went about making this initial gouache cutout to get the idea of the final design. And this was made into this ceramic. Upon the advent of a major Matisse exhibition, the Brodies donated the cutout to this retrospective. This was one of Matisse's last works and it was also his only West Coast based commission in America. He made the cutout in his home in Vence in the south of France. So he was inspired by the light and the life that was down in the south of France. This really was sympathetic with this LA colour, light and life. Upon Francis Brodie's death, this ceramic was donated to LACMA, a prominent American art institution, so we can now enjoy it for ourselves. Next up, we're going to look at the style. This work by Matisse in his latter years is abstract expressionism, but it's figurative. We can see that it represents and it's trying to represent an actual object, the object of flowers. If his earlier works were the idea of breaking down form, here we can see the idea of his intentions. If Matisse was known for reinventing colour in art, which we'll look at later, here he's really found freedom in the expression of decoration. He told one of his friends, I have the mastery of it, I'm sure of it. 
And we can see that here, he's still got this use of revolutionary colour, these bold reds, these bold oranges, bold greens and blues. But he's also got this idea of simple decoration. But as a whole, as a total work, it really a complex aesthetic to our eyes. Now the Faux's movement, which Matisse was a forerunner of, really was formative for his use of colour throughout his life. The Fauves rejected the harmonies of the Impressionists and instead were more interested with the colour and the pattern-like uh, motifs of the post-Impressionists such as Van Gogh and Gauguin. And we know that Matisse frequented uh, when he was in Paris, exhibitions and shows put on by the likes of Durand Ruel, a prominent art dealer, and he would have seen the works of Van Gogh and Gauguin. Matisse said, Fauvism is not everything, but it is the foundation of everything. Here we can see decorative simplification, sort of the development of these ideas. Next, we're going to look at who influenced Matisse. He did live a long artistic life, 85 years, and throughout that he surrounded himself with artists, major and minor, and aesthetes, and he had this community of aesthetic inspiration. From the early days, um, at the turn of the 20th century, he frequented uh, exhibitions that art dealers put on so he could see the works of some of the post-impressionists. Later, his friends, the Fauves, influenced him and in turn he influenced them too, which we'll look at again. He continued to develop his style, unlike the Fauves, who uh, lost their way a little as to how to develop their style. He made lots of trips abroad. He went to Tahiti, where Gauguin frequented, he went to New York, he travelled extensively around France and some of Europe, and so he was exposed to different cultures. And this was a commission by Los Angeles-based uh, patrons, and so he would have been influenced by that too. He changed his style a lot, but it was always with a view to discover the essential character of things, as he said. He was really influenced by different media. He collected textiles from different cultures, that was something he was interested in, and he also dabbled with different media, sculptures, making uh, designs for textiles, making two-dimensional art, installation art, three-dimensional art, designing for um, interior spaces and architecture. So these methods would have informed his development of his style. Increasingly, he flattened perspectival images to make a more two-dimensional design. So thanks to all of these influences in his life, this is the culmination. But who did Matisse influence in turn? We'll look at that next. So Matisse lived a long life, and in the early 20th century, there was this cultural visual exchange between European artists and American artists. Matisse, in his early life, studied law, but much to the disappointment of his dad, he decided to study art at École de Paris at the same time. Now, these École de Paris artists were crucial to the development of art in the Western world in the early 20th century. They were really the inspiration for artists all around. And Matisse was producing, alongside his contemporaries, some of the most ambitious artwork of his life. He, they really pushed the boundaries, pushed the envelope of what was acceptable. And in America, there was a real turn away from abstraction. They wanted to produce more form-led images. Although this is abstract expressionist, there's still um, an intention of what Matisse is trying to represent. And so this was seen as so favourable by the Americans. So this is not one of his most famous works, and it's not even one of his most famous cutouts, but it's really significant as to where Matisse came in his life, especially as he died only a few months after making this work. And as the forerunner of the Fauves in his formative years, he was the only one of these artists of the Fauves to really develop his style throughout his life. Can we imagine what would have happened if all the Fauves had started developing work and pushing the boundaries and pushing the methods of making art through life? The key thing about Matisse is he wasn't really put off. He didn't let any inhibitions cloud him making art. As we can see here as a prime example, he suffered this illness and he had an operation which weakened his stomach muscles and he had to turn away from the physical aspects of making oil painting, but he still persevered. And we can see the vitality and the ebullience of life here, which signifies, even at the end of his life, his fortitude and stoicism to keep producing a joy of art. Like the video, subscribe to our page and spread the word.